This next pro tip is a popular one because it's a very common topic that I hear about all the time, which is how do I group my dates or how do I handle my date specific fields within my pivot tables? Now, pivots by default do include standard tools for grouping date fields. You can turn days into months or quarters or years, etc. Now, sometimes your dates will automatically group and sometimes they won't. And this depends on your Excel settings. I'm going to show you how we can head to our options menu to see whether or not that automatic date grouping feature is enabled. Now, for this demo, we're going to be working with movie title release dates, which is obviously at the day level. And I'm going to show you two approaches. First, we're going to show how to automatically group those dates by adjusting our settings. And then we're going to right click and manually drill into those grouping options. And in this case, we're grouping dates by months, quarters, and years. And when we do that, we end up with something like this. You'll notice that we've created new fields that only exist in our pivot, not the source data, titled years and quarters. And those fields can be used just like any other. You can pull quarters out. You can pull the release date out, which is now actually capturing the month name and basically manipulate them just like any other dimension in your table. But if you're like me, you might find this kind of clumsy and cumbersome, It kind of nests them all together. It makes it very hard to access your original release date field once you've grouped them. So I'm going to actually show you an alternative approach as well, which I find to be a bit more flexible uh, by actually creating some new fields in our source data via calculated columns using some simple date and time functions. So the use cases here, regardless of which approach you take, um, it's all about rolling up granular data, like daily data, in order to analyze trends or patterns at a higher level, like month or quarter or year, or creating high-level summary tables or charts that are sourced from more granular source data. So with that, let's open up our pro tip workbook. Let's look at these release dates and explore a few different ways that we can group or aggregate those dates at different levels. All right, so from the table of contents, go ahead and look for the grouping dates demo in the gray pivot table tip section and link straight out to that sheet. And what we've got here is a blank pivot table. It's going to be sourced from our IMDb movie database. I've actually made that source data accessible in the next tab, grouping dates, parentheses, data. So pretty simple data set here, just a quick sample from our IMDb movie database. We've got titles in column A, the release dates in column B, and then a few different numerical metrics, total number of reviews, and the gross revenue in column C and D. So back to our pivot tab, the grouping dates tab. Because my Excel settings are defined to automatically group dates in pivots, watch what happens when I grab this release date column and pull it into rows. See how it created, it kind of blew up into three different fields, years, quarters, and release date. And it's kind of nested the data all together into years, quarters, and in this case, months. And what you'll notice is that even if I go into my design tab, change this to an outline form, it still kind of gets collapsed and rolled up in kind of an awkward way that I personally don't really like. Now I could pull quarters out and release date out and just aggregate data by year, for instance, you know, and pull in my numerical metrics like the sum of revenue. Or what I'm going to show you in just a minute, I could define a year column in my actual source data and have it accessible to me as well as my original release dates. So I'm going to hit control Z to undo a few times all the way back to my original pivot with nothing in my areas panes. Now, depending on your settings, you may not have seen those release dates group in the way that they did when I pulled them into row labels. And what we're going to do to check that is head to our file menu, drill into our options and head to the data options here. Now in the data options section right here at the bottom, you'll see a checkbox that says disable automatic grouping of date time columns in pivot tables. So in most cases, this will be unchecked, which means that the automatic grouping is enabled. If you don't want your dates to group, just go ahead and check that box and press OK. I actually prefer to keep that box checked because I like to define the groupings on my own exactly like I want them. 
So now if I grab that release date and pull it into rows, it's just staying right there as release date in its original form, non-grouped. So from here, if we did want to group this data, let's say up to the year or month level, we could right click and access our grouping tools, which you can also access in your pivot table analyze tab, grouping tools right here, group field. Both will take you to this grouping dialog box, which basically allows you to determine, okay, here is the range of dates I care about, release dates from 1920 through 2015, and select the individual fields that you want to include in your grouping. So for instance, days, months, quarters, and years, we can press OK, and it's created three extra columns here for each of those grouping levels, and it's nested them right here within column A. Now again, that may be exactly what you want, that may be just fine, you can use any of those fields individually, but I'm going to show you an approach that I generally tend to take more often. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. And what I'm going to do is actually navigate to my source data, which is in this grouping dates data tab. And let's insert two columns here right after column B. And I'm going to name one of them release month, one of them release year. And here I can just use basic date and time functions to reference that release date and categorize a month and a year. So in column C, it would be month of B2, and year would be equals year of B2. And note these are formatted kind of silly because they've basically inherited the release date format here. So let's right click, format the cells as general, press OK. There you go. So month is 9 September, release is 1920. Boom, double click, and now we have months and years as a new column right here in our source data set. And if we go back to our pivot, pivot table tools, we can refresh since we've made a change within the bounds of our original table. And now we have these two fields available to us. So just like any other, we can grab month, pull it into row labels. These are all the dates in January and all the dates if we scroll down in February, March, April, etc. Or we can pull those individual fields out and say, you know what, I just want to organize or aggregate my data by year. Let's look at the total sum of gross revenue based on the year of the release date here. So I prefer this approach. It gives me a little bit more flexibility. Now those fields are actually defined in my source data if I want to use them elsewhere as well. But again, there's no right or wrong here, totally up to you. Two different ways to group your dates using Excel pivot tables.